Hey, and a good evening, everybody. Almost evening, everybody. Meteorologist Greg Majeski back with you here on the Weather News YouTube channel with a Hurricane Melissa update here. Got all the five o'clock information in. Some slight changes have taken place, but the storm is uh, very intense, continues to strengthen, and we're going to break all this down for you here in this update. Now, if you come to this update after the live broadcast, and if you like a no-nonsense weather guy, a meteorologist who can actually give it to you straight without blowing everything out of proportion, uh, please consider uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button being part of our weather family here. Now, with that being said, uh, I can't even use the type of words to describe the catastrophe that's about to strike Jamaica. I know I, I tend to try to keep things even keel, but I'm telling you, in all my years that I've been tracking tropical systems, uh, this one is going to be historic because it's because of the slow moving nature of the storm, uh, the duration it's going to be impacting Jamaica, and the the uh, the loss of life we're probably going to see likely with the flooding, the storm surge, and everything that's going to go on on that island. It's probably going to lose you know if not all of its power grid when this thing comes on board. It is truly an historic storm. There will never be. I'll tell you right now, another Melissa. This one will be retired at that. All right, so let's go ahead and break all this down for you. <clears throat> Top sustained winds now at 145 miles per hour. Continue to move to the west at 5. Now, the track has shifted a little bit further to the west where the landfall is going to be. Earlier this morning, it looked like we were going to have a landfall somewhere around Kingston. It's now shifted to, to the west a little bit, but it still puts Kingston on that right side of the eye. Again, the strongest portion of the storm is always on that right side. And look how symmetrical this thing looks. I mean, a perfect eye. This morning, it was about 17 miles across. It's come down to about 6. Uh, it pressures down to 941 millibars. The hurricane aircraft are out there. It sure does look like a Category 5. It may make it still forecast to get to a Category 5, <clears throat> which, again, is getting up to 160 miles per hour. And we may see that for tonight. And uh, if we don't, it's going to be very close. And then as it makes that landfall, it should begin to weaken a little bit. Again, these... These intense eyes don't usually last more than about 24 to 36 hours before they go through what we call a life, an eye life cycle replacement that may happen. But right now, this thing is textbook. I mean, a, a very symmetrical, what we call a central dense overcast right there. Again, you've got the, the, the hurricane force winds going on about 25, 30 miles from the center. So uh, again, it's, it's a very, very tight as far as its eye feel here. In fact, I'll go ahead and highlight some of this for you here so you can kind of see some of this. So let me go ahead and turn some of this on here as you can kind of look at the current wind profile here. So there's the wind profile. Again, I do with it that most intense winds are around that orange section right there. And then you got the, the tropical, the hurricane gusts to tropical storm gusts. And then you got the tropical, we got the other winds out, extending out further out away from it. So again, we're getting some gusty winds up into Jamaica. That is coming into right now. Again, here's that forecast cone, which is taking it right over the island of Jamaica. Uh, it's going to be, uh, again, a very, very uh, bad thing here for uh, the folks in Jamaica. And they're getting, they're, getting themselves, they're getting ready. I know a lot of folks are getting ready for this. Uh, I can show you one of the live cameras there uh, looking over the bay. You can kind of get an idea that the, 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 the surf there is getting a little bit uh, rougher. Uh, the winds are starting to come up. Definitely looking a little choppier than it was this morning when we were looking out there and looking at everything that was going on out there. But uh, definitely uh, going to be one of those things. I've, got, I've been watching you know, these cameras here on and off here throughout the day and uh, definitely seeing things have secured up. Yesterday, when you were looking at the live cameras out there, uh, folks were out and about doing everything. You had businesses open up. You had a lot of stuff going on out there. Not seeing that now. Looks like things are pretty much everybody has uh, heated the warning and everything and uh, now just kind of uh, get, getting ready to deal with this storm, which is going to be coming in tomorrow night and uh, going into Tuesday morning. And then once it goes on by, the cleanup efforts will begin in earnest, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of uh, uh, aid that'll be going out there uh, once once the storm does officially make its landfall and goes on. So here is the wider perspective here. <clears throat> Again, looking at the official track here uh, from the National Hurricane Center, as you can see it. Uh, by the time we get to 2 o'clock on Wednesday, then we're going to be looking at uh, areas of the Bahamas. But by that time, it should be begin weakening uh, back down to at least a Category 2 at that time. Again, as it moves north and gets picked up by that trough, the upper level winds are going to become less favorable. So we'll get some more wind shield that'll begin weakening the storm as it quickly um, you know, moves off the eastern seaboard. And in its wake, we'll have a nice cool down, big trough across the eastern portion of the United States. Uh, but this thing will begin to get tugged on uh, as we go toward Tuesday. Uh, that's when it'll really start to begin to accelerate and make that turn to the north uh, beginning tomorrow and then going into Tuesday, begin to take it off to the north. So... Again, still sitting over some relatively warm waters out there, 
uh, you can definitely uh, see that. I can go ahead and, and show you this real quick. So let me go ahead and uh, kind of highlight some of those water temperatures in here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer here uh, to get in toward Jamaica here a little bit. Let me get a little bit closer here and uh, kind of give an idea of the water temperatures out here. I'm just going to highlight some of, some of the areas out here, out ahead of here, and just kind of highlight that's 84.7 degrees there. Um, again, uh, 84.5. So again, right around 84, 85 degrees. So very warm waters. So again, you look at it, water temperatures above 80 degrees is what a, the fuel source for a hurricane. And this has definitely got some high octane fuel to go by here uh, as this thing is going over those waters. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the model data on this. We're going to go look at the latest here. Again, we're looking at the uh, the European model here, and that's my preferred model of choice here. Uh, again, looking at the European ensembles model. Again, they're all pretty much clustered together here. Everything taken off as it, it's going to go around this, uh, this weakness in the high. So we got the high pressure ridge, which is it, which is basically sitting right in here, and we got this weakness. See that weakness kind of developing right through there. It's going to follow that almost like a bowling alley. It's going to go right down that path of least resistance and go straight on out and uh, and clear on over the island. All right, so, but right now, the, the, the areas that are going to be greatest impact on this is going to be, obviously, Jamaica. Uh, we're talking about Cuba. We're talking parts of Haiti and the Southern Bahama Islands, okay? Now, the big problem for Jamaica, especially going on, is that we're talking about hours and hours and hours of very, very heavy rain. So, landslides, flooding is going to be a problem. Again, you've got some mountainous terrain there in Jamaica as well. Uh, so, it's going to be very problematic. It's going to wash out a lot of roads down there. It's going to cause a lot of problems. I will say this much, uh, American. if you want to make a, red, a donation to the American Red Cross, which is going to get uh, highly involved in this, highly recommend that. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of relief services that are going to be heading down to that island. The Navy's already got a pretty large presence down in the Caribbean right now for other reasons. But I'm guessing once the storm goes on by, they're going to be diverted to uh, Jamaica to help out some of the relief efforts to go down that way uh, once this makes landfall. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the big dynamics here. We're looking at the upper level winds. We're looking at the 500 millibar height anomaly map. <clears throat> Again, the thing that's going to be tugging this thing is this big old trough here that's kind of an elongated trough that's kind of stretching down into and down into the southeast. It's going to pick this storm up and take it right on out uh, very quickly as we begin uh, going into Monday. So I'm going to back this up here a little bit. Again, going into Monday, it kind of picks this thing up and just steers it right on out over the Bahamas. Southern Bahamas will have some hurricane presence. And it really just gets extended right on out. Going to go very close to Bermuda, the way it looks, whatever's left of this thing, by the time it kicks on out and goes out into the middle of the Atlantic. Here's another perspective on this. The, again, looking at the precipitation mode here on this. Although the European is not initializing the strength field very, very accurately on this, because obviously it's a lot lower than, uh, like, like it's showing like 975 millibars tomorrow morning. No, it's it's now 941, if not lower than that. The Hurricane Hunter aircraft are still out there right now. I got a funny feeling it's a little bit lower than that, just looking at that eye representation. It's going to go right over the island. That that track is still looking reasonable to me. I mean, that, the European looks pretty much dead on with what the what the Hurricane Center is showing here. So this thing goes right on out, gets really close down on Bermuda there, it looks like, and then it goes, it goes on out to sea. Now, if this storm makes Category 5, it'll be the third one this year. That'll be unprecedented in the Atlantic. I don't believe that's ever happened. I think we've had two, but never three. Uh, in the same year. So if it does get to Category 5, uh, it'll definitely be an historic year, to say the least, even though we have not had a land-falling hurricane in our tropical system, for that matter, in the continental United States this year. Last year, we had four. This year, we've got goose egg zero, and hopefully it'll stay that way uh, for whatever's left of the hurricane season, which is about, what, 34, 35 days left. Okay? All right, so let's take a look. I want to take a look at well, the rainfall totals again. Th these are going to just be off the chart. I, I think 20, 25 inches plus in here, I've seen some other models going even higher than that. Uh, it's again the, the the flooding potential here is going to be very off the charts. Typically, the models do not do an accurate representation of tropical rains. They tend to underestimate. You can add about 25% to those totals uh, for the most part. But uh, the whole island of of Jamaica is going to be looking at some flooding. This peninsula here uh, out of out of uh, Hispaniola and Haiti is also going to be dealing with it, and up toward uh, obviously Cuba as well. Some very very heavy rains in here. But that's white pretty much. It, that's when you're getting it off the chart. Uh, here you see the chart here over the right. You're getting above 20 inches here on the bottom end of that scale as this thing is uh, moving up this way. So flooding is definitely a problem. And then obviously we got the wind. We got the, the core winds, which are going to be, again, this is very compact. Now, let me point out one thing. Just like we saw with Aaron when it was a Cat 5, very similar in size, by the way, uh, as far as the winds, when it was at its strongest. When it goes through an eye wall, 
cycle replacement, the wind field tends to, to begin to expand out. Imagine like a skater that's skating and throws its arms out. That wind profile is going to expand out as it moves northward. So again, that's what we're expecting here with the storm here as it approaches uh, into in toward Jamaica. Again, it's going westward, then it starts being pulled to the north. So the track here and this hurricane model is pretty much on target with what the hurricane center is tracking, maybe just a little bit further west here. Uh, but it makes a nice landfall. And again, when it's in this position here, you're, again, you got all this wind energy just diving and driving water in here. So this whole coastal area in here is going to be severely flooded. That's where a lot of the, 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 the bay shot we were just showing you, that's uh, in the Kingston Bay. A lot of tremendous amount of storm surge is going to go get shoved right into there uh, as that storm surge and as this thing makes landfall. It's initial landfall. So this will be landfall number one. And then it'll cross, but notice the wind field starting to expand out. Even as it's crossing Jamaica, that wind field starts to expand on out, and then it'll make landfall number two going across the tip of Cuba down here. And then it'll make, it'll start pulling into the southern Bahamas. So the southern Bahamas up there in the Turks and Caicos, uh, they're going to get going to get a, a glancing blow there as well as this big wind field begins to push on out. So that right there is the latest. Here. But but notice look notice notice that wind field. Look how tight it is now. And then look how big this wind field is once it gets back over the Bahamas. Look how much bigger that wind field is. It really kind of opens up, okay, as that wind field begins to open on out. All right, so again, uh, it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, hopefully everybody's got everything uh, taken care of here. I'll go back to this shot here, going back. This is one of the cameras I'll be watching as long as it's, uh, it's got power. Uh, again, I think we'll be okay tomorrow morning. We'll be okay. But going toward uh, the end of the day tomorrow, going into the overnight hours into Tuesday, uh, that's when things are really going to go downhill. Hopefully that folks have gotten as prepared as they can get. They've taken shelter. They're away from the, the storm surge areas. They're away from flood prone areas. I've heard, I've seen stories of folks reporting and saying that some folks saying they're not going to evacuate. They're not going to move. I'm like, well, that's to your detriment. That's not a good thing to do uh, with this thing going ahead and coming on in and making a landfall like this. So this is going to be um, going to be rough there for uh, the folks there in Jamaica. As you got to see again, they're everybody kind of, kind of, cleaning up a little bit, and uh, hopefully the higher winds will stay away from Kingston. I know the, the flooding might be a problem there at Kingston if, the, if it does go further down the beach there. Kingston, of course, is the, the capital. That's where a lot of your uh, a lot of your tourist areas are, are your, your retreats and things are down that, are not down that way. So, uh, again, we'll hopefully uh, we'll get uh, the least amount of loss of life that we're going to get. I, we're going to have deaths. I just, I just don't see any way getting around that. Uh, with this thing uh, being like it is here for tonight. So let me get this thing look over here. I'm going to shut this down again. Again, just looking at this this track here again, uh, just an amazing, amazing shot here with this infrared imagery, just a, a perfect symmetrical storm. I mean, uh, definitely, definitely looking here. I'm going to check one more thing before I sign off and get for update. I want to see if there's one more vortex message here from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft. Just stand by here for a second while I do this live for you real quick. I want to check and see. Uh, if we've got one more update here on the Vortex message here, so just stand by real quick as I take a look at this. We'll see if there's been anything new come in. Nope, still holding its own. So, so 942, 6 mile. Although the H says 132 knots, that's actually 150 miles per hour. So uh, it's possible on the on the 8 o'clock advisory that wind, which is currently sustained winds at 145, might get bumped up to 150. So uh, we'll see how this works out. Again, these storms typically have a better uh, chance of uh, strengthening at, at night more than during the day. During the day, you got daytime heating, you got natural rising and stuff. You don't have to fight that at night. So these, these storms, as we saw already, this thing went from 90 mile per hour winds to 140 mile per hour winds and, uh, overnight from 5 o'clock yesterday to the uh, 8 o'clock advisory this morning. We, it went up that much. We knew that was what was going to happen, and we knew we are going to have this thing. Now, the question is going to be tomorrow morning, do we still have an eye that looks this great or not? How long, how long does this eye cycle last? That's going to be the big question we watch shader for tomorrow. Hey, good to see everybody out there tonight. We got, you got Edith on there. Rosin, I got Mick. Hey, Mick, good to see you. Uh, who else we got on there? Edith. And there's John. Hey, John. Good to see you out there. Good to see everybody out there for tonight. And again, we'll do another one of these in the morning. I will not be doing the standard the, the weather report tomorrow. We will be doing, uh, again, another uh, Hurricane Central update. Uh, in the morning, uh, probably sometime uh, shortly after 8 or right after the 8 o'clock advisory comes in. And uh, we'll, we'll break it all down and take a look at the latest uh, conditions, look at the latest model data. And uh, right now, I don't see anything that's going to abruptly change. 
uh, unless it shifts a little bit further to the west, which I guess could be a little bit better for at least the Kingston area. It kind of shifts to the other end of the island. Uh, where, but uh, yesterday it was like, luckily it was like going dead center of the island. Like the whole core of the hurricane is going to go right over the dead center of the island. So uh, hopefully it doesn't come back to the right. We'll see. All right, that's y'all's update here for tonight. You guys take it easy. Be good, stay safe, and we'll see you tomorrow on the next update. And again, uh, let's say the prayers for people down in Jamaica, Cuba, his, uh, there in Haiti, and the Bahamas, because this is uh, going to be the most significant storm that's impacted people this hurricane season that, we, that we've seen. So, all right, you guys take it easy. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a good night.